Hello. Good morning, dear students. Today we are starting with the third chapter of supplementary textbook, that is Ishwaran the Storyteller. It is an interesting story. So let us just start with the chapter. The story was narrated to Ganesh by a young man, Mahindra by name. So the whole story is narrated by Ganesh, whose original name was Mahindra. He was a junior supervisor in the firm, which offered on higher supervisors at various types of construction sites, factories, bridges, dams, and so on. Mahindra's job was to keep an eye on the activities at the work site. He had to keep moving from place to place every now and then, as ordered by his head office from a coal mining area to a railway bridge construction site, from where thereafter a few moments, months to a chemical plant which was upcoming somewhere. So the sorry, the job of Mahindra was such that he was supposed to move from here to that for his job as he was a junior supervisor in a firm and his job was such that he will move from here to there for job some would sometimes he will be in a factory sometimes he will be in a coal mine like that he was a bachelor bachelor means he was not married he wasn't married his needs were simple and was able to adjust himself in all the kinds of odd conditions, whether it was an ill-equipped circuit house or a makeshift canvas tent in the middle of the stone quarry. So the needs of Ma- Ganesh were very much simple, and that is Mahendra was very much simple, and he will adjust himself in any kind of the situation. Either he will get a luxurious circuit house and also he would adjust over there and if he would get a t- tent or a canvas type area then also he would adjust everything. But one asset he had was his cook, Ishwaran. But he was having one person with him who was very much trustable and the name of that person was Ishwaran. The cook was quite attached to Mahendra and followed him uncomplainingly wherever he was posted. So Ishwaran is the name of the cook over here, the cook of Mahendra. And what he used to do, he used to follow Mahendra wherever he was posted because he was a bachelor. So it is very much obvious that how he would manage all the things, how he would manage about his lunch, breakfast and dinner. So Ishwaran used to follow him everywhere wherever he was posted he cooked for mahendra washed his clothes and cast away with his master at night so what he used to do he used to cook for mahendra he used to wash the clothes of mahendra and he used to chat means he used to talk with mahendra about the whole day he could weave out endless stories about incidents and varied subjects and Mah- Ishwaran was having such a talent that he could know number of stories about everything. So and he knows some more secrets as well. So he used to tell that secrets to Mahindra. Ishwaran hold also had an amazing capacity to produce the vegetables and cooking ingredients. Seemingly out nowhere in the middle of the desolate landscape with no shops visible for miles around. The next capacity the Ishwaran was having that was that he could also produce the vegetables and spices in the middle of the land winds in such type of areas if they were posted that for miles and miles they could not find any shops grocery shops and anything he would produce the foods and vegetables over there only he could miraculously conjure up the most delicious dishes made with fresh vegetables within an hour of arriving the zinc sheet shelter with the new workplace so after arriving the house he would produce the delicious dishes for Mahindra
work after breakfast carrying some prepared food with him and he would work after the breakfast mahindra and ishwaran would also hand him some food for <clears throat> after breakfast as well meanwhile ishwaran would tidy up the shed wash up the clothes and even leisurely bath pouring several buckets of water over his head muttering a prayer all the while it would be lunch time by then after dating he would read for a while before dozing off the book was usually some popular tamil thriller running to hundreds of pages its imaginative descriptions and narrative flourishes would hold ishwaran in thrall so after the mahendra left for his job what ishwaran used to do he used to take a bath he used to prepare lunch he used to take the lunch and he, before going to the sleep he would read the book and the book was a tamil book and in that book number of tamil thrillers with number of secrets were mentioned his own descriptions were greatly influenced by the tamil authors that he read when he was narrating even the smallest of incident he would try to work in suspense for a surprise ending into the account so the way he used to read the book and the way he used to present the message of the book and before in to some when he would present in such a way that it would be a thriller or it would be a kind of a suspense or a surprise for that person for example instead of saying that he had come across an uprooted tree on the highway he would say with eyebrows suitably arched and hands held out in dramatic gesture the road was deserted and i was all alone so instead of saying directly that they were passing the highway he would say physically that how the person would pass the highway by catching each other's hand and if someone is coming from the wrong side in a very high speed what would be the reactions of the riders and everything the road was deserted that looked like an enormous bushy beast lying on and go back but as i came closer i saw that it was a fallen tree with its dry branches spread out mahendra would stretch himself back in the canvas chair and listen to the issue and still and critically so he used to say everything in such a way and at last mahendra would stretch himself back in the canvas the place i come from has is a famous for timber ishuran would begin there is a richly wooded forest all around the logs are hauled on the lorries by elephants they are huge well fed beast when they turn wild even the most experienced mahav does not able to control them so the example of elephant is given that once the elephant was there and if he has lost his patient it would be very much tough for the mahav to control that elephant after this <coughs> sorry prolog ishwaran would launch into an elaborate anecdote involving an elephant one day a tusker escaped from the timber yard and began to roam out stamping on the bushes tearing up wild creepers and breaking branches at will you know sir how an elephant behaves when it goes mad ishwaran would go so caught up by the excitement of his own story that he would get up from the floor and jump about stamping his feet in elation of the mad elephant so whenever he is expressing his feelings about the tamil book he would express in such a way that actually he is facing that problem or actually he is about to do that thing so the reactions were real the elephant reached the outskirts of the town and the example is given that once the elephant was has came out from the jungle and how the elephant roamed in the city breaking the fences about down the mat sticks he would continue it came into the main road and smashed the small selling fruits mud pots and clothes people ran high helter skelter in panic the elephant now entered into the school ground where the children were playing breaking through the brick wall all the boys ran into the classroom then shut the doors tight the beast grunted and wandered about pulling all the football goals posting tearing around the volleyball net kicking the flattering and drop net capped of water and uprooting the shrubs meanwhile all the teachers had climbed up to the terrace of the school building from that they were helpless they watched the depredations of the elephant they were not sold because below on the ground the streets were empty and as if the inhabitant of the same entire town had suddenly disappeared so once the elephant entered into the city 
He just to smash out all the small towns, small shops of fruit sellers and everything. And once he entered into the school, breaking the brick wall as well. And when he entered into the school, the teachers and the students ran away. And the teachers saw the elephant from the top of the terrace. I was studying in a junior class at that time and was watching the whole drama from the rooftop. I don't know what came over me suddenly. I grabbed a cane from the hands of one of the teachers and ran down the stairs into the open. The elephant grunted and menacingly swung a branch of a tree which led it to its trunk. It stamped its foot, picking up a lot of mud and dust. It looked frightening, but I moved slowly towards it, stick in hand. People were watching the scene. I hypnotized from nearby housetops. The elephant looked at me, red-eyed, ready to rush towards me. It lifted its trunk and trumpeted loudly. At that moment, I moved forward, mustering all my force. Right. So, the Mahindra, sorry, Ishwaran was also in the same school. So, what did he do? He took a stick from the hand of the teacher and he was observing it from the rooftop. He just ran down and whenever he ran down downwards, the, everyone was seeing to him that what, what he will do. It's third tunion on the creek. The beast looked stunned for a moment. Then it shivered from head to foot and collapsed. At this point, Ishwaran would leave the story unfinished and get up mumbling. I will be back after lighting the gas and warming up the dinner. Mahindra, who had been listening with rapt attention, would be left hanging. When he returned, Ishwaran would not pick up the thread of the story right away. Mahindra would have to remind him that the conclusion was pending. While a veterinary doctor was summoned to revive the animal, the Ishwaran would stop casually. Two days later, it was led away by its mahout in the jungle. But whenever the time came to tell the real story of, or the suspense of the story, what he would do, he would keep the story over there hanging and he will tell to Mahindra that we will continue after the dinner. But when they returned after the dinner, he would forget about that thing. So Mahindra has to remind to him. And afterwards, the veterinary doctor was called over there and the elephant was led out in the jungle after two days. Well, how did you manage to do Ishwaran? How did you bring down the beast? It was something to do with the Japanese art, I thank sir. Karate or choose to, as I called. I had read about it somewhere that temporarily paralysis it temporarily paralysis the nervous system, you see. So he had already seen somewhere or learned somewhere that how to control the elephant. What he did, he just did uh, the stick he was having, he just picked that stick on the nail of the elephant. Not a day passed without Ishwara and recounting some story packed with adventure, horror and suspense. Whether the story was credible or not, Mahindra enjoyed listening to it because of the inimitable way in which he was told. Ishwara seemed to more than make up for the absence in the TV and the Mahindra's living quarters. One morning, when Mahindra was having his breakfast, Ishwaran asked, can I ask something special for the dinner tonight? After all day, today is an auspicious day. According to the tradition, we prepare various delicacies to feed the spirits of our ancestors today. That night, Mahindra enjoyed the most delicious dinner and complimented Ishwaran for its culinary skill. He seemed very pleased but unexpectedly launched into a garish account involving the supernatural. So, one morning, Mahindra Ishwaran asked Mahindra to prepare delicious food for him and he said that and he said that they are supposed to prepare delicious food to the entire day he gave a delicious food to Mahindra. Thank you.